The first time I made a roasted pineapple macaron was several years ago now, and honestly, it was just a fun experiment, but the reaction I got from so many people was so positive. I have made several slightly different versions, but more or less the same ever since, and I'm starting off by roasting some pineapple with brown sugar, regular sugar, a couple spices, and I'm using some lemon because I forgot to buy a lime. I would recommend recommend using lime juice uh, but basically I'm going through this very long process to end up with basically like a pineapple compote and then I'm also going to take that same pineapple and grind it up to create like a uh, pineapple puree to put in some buttercream. I'm sure there are ways to streamline this process but I found that this is the method that works for me and I really like the end result so I've just continued doing it this way but yeah so I first like to start off by having my pineapple I'm using fresh pineapple here and I'm just removing the outside awful bits and then chopping off hacking off some of the pineapple giving that a really rough cube you probably could just leave the slabs of pineapple as they are and then i'm gonna dump it into a pan just to roast kind of low and slow along with everything else for a couple hours i just use like a cake pan for this and honestly you don't need well you don't need a ton of pineapple especially for a small batch this is going to cook down quite a a bit so in the beginning it looks like way too much pineapple and by the end you're kind of like yep that's a reasonable amount of pineapple so even if you are making a tiny batch i would recommend using the full pineapple like don't mess around with this recipe just use the full pineapple and if you end up with extra pineapple compote like i don't know put it and some overnight oats or something like it's delicious you'll want to eat it <laughs> it won't go to waste Again, as I mentioned, I think you can just throw these slabs of pineapple into your roasting pan or cake pan, whatever you're cooking it in, uh, but I just cube it up a little bit easier to move around and make sure that everything's nice and coated. Um, then I'm just dumping in all of the sugar and followed by some spices. I'm using a couple cinnamon sticks, several star anise. I think that's pretty important for the flavor I like. And then some whole cloves. I'm using whole spices so that they can get really nice and roasty and flavorful now, but then I can easily pluck them out later. I am adding in a bit of, again, I use lemon juice. I would use lime juice for some zesty, bright flavor. And then because right now I want to roast and infuse the pineapple with all those spices and sugars, I um, covered it with aluminum foil so that I, I didn't want to evaporate any of the liquid yet. Um, and as you can see here, the kind of bottom is a little bit juicier and caramelier than the top part. So if you want to flip it and then continue baking a bit, absolutely go for that. This really depends on how much you want to cook it now and get everything roasted and cooked now. Um, so now comes the next step. After that's cooled just a bit, I am, or you even could cool it completely depending on your timetable. You could stick it in the fridge overnight or something. I'm going to chop this up into pretty small pieces and then I'm going to transfer all of those pieces of pineapple and all the liquids minus the spices um, into a saucepan and cook it down at that point that's when i'm going to really work on caramelizing and evaporating all the remaining liquid in there and because i want to do that process and create this like compote jam sort of thing um, that's why i didn't want any of the liquid to evaporate earlier if the liquid evaporated earlier i might need to add in a little bit more liquid now so i could get the pineapple into that really like jammy caramely compote -y kind of state right now the pineapple still has just like tons of moisture locked in there and so what i really want to do is as the liquid is evaporating i want the liquid that's still in the pineapple 
to caramelize and or evaporate as well so when it goes into the macaron at the end i don't have soggy macarons i'm not though trying to create like a jam so this isn't going to be like spreadable and that is why i will remove a little bit puree it and stick that into my buttercream so i can get this pineapple roasty pineapple flavor into my buttercream without having a chunky buttercream so here you can see there's still a lot of liquid remaining i'm going to continue cooking that it's going to look nice and golden brown and delicious there should be basically no liquid left then remove it let it cool completely in your refrigerator before you touch it again The next thing I'm going to show you is my macaron shell here. I'm using the autumn gold from the Sugar Art Master Elites. I'm also using friotine, which is kind of like a crispy crepe, um, as my decoration with a little bit of gold edible luster dust. Otherwise, this French method macaron is going to be exactly the same. I just really like decorating my pineapple max like this for some reason. I don't know why. Again, this is just something I randomly did the first time I made this roasted pineapple macaron, and I've been doing it exactly the same way ever since. I just like really fell in love with the entire idea of the macaron. If you've never used friotine before, it is just this really crunchy, nice, um, sprinkly sort of thing. It's a great for adding a crunchy element into any of your baked goods. I like putting it on macarons as decoration instead of a sprinkle sometimes just to shake it up a little bit. And it's also really, really easy to color it a bit with luster dust as you saw me do just using a plastic bag. I am using the French method here for my meringue, which means room temperature egg whites. Starting those whipping once I see it looking nice and frothy, I'm streaming in my sugar and a bit of cream of tartar. Then I'm going to continue whipping till all the sugar is incorporated. It's about 70% of the way done. That's when I like to add in my food colorant, either the powder, as you see me using here, or a gel food colorant can be added in at that same time. Once you get a really nice stiff peak, that's when I'm gonna transfer the meringue to a larger, wider bowl. This really helps me visualize what is going on as I add in my dry ingredients and go on to the macronage process. Personally, I think this autumn gold color in the uh, Sugar Art Master Elite series is like a really, really great pineapple color. Um, if you wanted to add in some other colors to make it a little bit more vibrant or yellowy, or if you wanted to create a swirl macaron or whatever, you have a lot of options for creating a sort of pineapple vibe for your max, but seriously, I love using just this one color. I think it says pineapple pretty clearly. So I am adding in my powdered ingredients, the almond flour and the powdered sugar. I have sifted those together to make sure that there are no lumps in there. You can also food process your dry ingredients just to make sure, again, there are no lumps. They're as fine as possible if you are finding yourself with slightly lumpy macaron shells and you are not sifting and or food processing your dry ingredients, I would make sure to give that a try. I am adding in those dry ingredients in three additions just to make sure that I don't have random pockets of dry ingredients and that I'm not over mixing. It can be a bit overwhelming to dump everything in and then try to nicely mix it all together without resulting in an over mixed batter just from what I have found. So I like to do it a little bit slower, but also not go too slow because if you go too slow, you can also end up over mixing. After all of the 
dry ingredients are incorporated, that's when I'm going to work on the macronage process. Then I'm going to be much more intentional with how I am mixing and folding. I like scraping around the sides of my bowl, folding the macaron batter like onto itself and then scraping it around the edges again. This will really help to evenly deflate the batter and will lead us to the ribbon stage. The ribbon stage is when I pull my spatula up out of the batter and it flows back down into the bowl. It should flow really nicely like a ribbon. And then after about 30 seconds, that ribbon should kind of more or less flow back into the rest of the batter. You shouldn't just have one weird mound of batter sticking up from where it fell from your spatula. Then I'm going to transfer this to my piping bag fitted with my piping tip. I'm using the 803 today, um, but you can use whatever size works best for you. And I also, the reason I used the luster dust to color my feuilletine earlier is that so it was ready and waiting for when I was done piping my macaron shells. I am using a silicone mat here with a template underneath for guidance. You can find silicone mats that already have a template in them. Those are super easy to use. I have both versions linked on my Amazon storefront page down below if you want to check out these or any of the other tools I'm using. I'm going to go through and pipe this entire tray. Then I'm going to put this, transfer this to a sheet pan, give the bottom a little tap. Then I'm going to sprinkle the gold dusted feuilletine over the top. If you were to pipe this entire tray, then dust with the gold feuilletine and then do the tapping, the feuilletine flakes are going to go flying and your kitchen will be a disaster. You also don't want to wait too long. So if you pipe your tray, you uh, tap the bottom, it's sitting there and you go through and pipe all the rest of your macarons. If you're just doing one or two trays, it's probably fine, but if you're doing a larger batch and you're doing four, six, eight, ten, twenty trays of macarons and you wait and do all the piping and then sprinkle the feuilletine on, a skin will have started to form and once that skin forms, the feuilletine are really not going to stick to the macaron shells unless you shove them in there and then that's going to ruin your beautiful macaron shell. So make sure you pipe, tap the tray, and then, you know, with some speed, get those feuilletine sprinkled on there so that they make sure uh, to stick to your macaron shells. I will say like any chunkier sprinkle, if you are storing these macarons in a clamshell container, it's going to be hard because they are a little bit bumpy, they do stick out, and they might poke out from the sides a little bit. So this is really ideal for people who are putting macaron shells into boxes or like a cupcake holder or a plastic bag or something like that. But if you are using that clamshell to store your macarons or to sell your macarons, um, just know that this might not be the best idea for you unless you decrease the size of your macarons in preparation of that additional size or kind of bumpiness. I am going to let these macaron shells then rest just like normal. For me, that's about 20 minutes in my kitchen. It might be longer for you. Then I'm going to bake them at 300 degrees in my kitchen. I usually bake them for 16 to 18 minutes. It might be longer in your kitchen. That is really dependent on your oven, the size of macarons you're making, the weather, the humidity level, all kinds of things. I also like to do, as you see me doing here, bake my macarons on the bottom side of my tray. I never used to do this, but I really got into the hang of doing this in the last couple of years. I found that sometimes if I didn't do this, the lip of the pan would kind of interfere with the airflow and sometimes along the edges I would end up with lopsided macarons and I never do anymore.
Now that those macs are baked, let's go back to that pineapple jam. You can see it is just looking so thick and caramely and delicious. I'm going to take a little bit of that, put it into my blender, and just blend it until it's a completely smooth puree. This is not absolutely necessary. I just really like to add that pureed bit into some vanilla buttercream. If you don't want to do that, I would recommend doing um, either like a cinnamon kind of a buttercream to lean into the spice aspect or do like um, a freeze-dried a powdered freeze-dried pineapple buttercream or do like a lime zest buttercream and lean into the citrus aspect. Whatever you do, I recommend putting a ring of buttercream around the outside of your macaron shell. Then use a little spoon to shove as much of the pineapple compote that you can onto the inside before sandwiching your macarons. As you can see here, and as you saw before, the reason um, for caramelizing the pineapples on the stove and really making sure to keep all the moisture out of there that is going to help the texture later on. So after these macarons mature, after they're sandwiched, they of course want to be in the fridge for about 24 hours before you bite into them. Um, if you do not get rid of all the liquid, if this is a lot looser, you are going to end up with macarons that get soggy a lot quicker. However, if you really make sure to get rid of all of that liquid to really caramelize and evaporate everything, these macarons are going to mature beautifully and they will last a long time. <laughs> um, sometimes if you have a really runny jam, if you don't eat them within the first couple days, they start getting soggy. These ones will not do that if they're made properly. Thank you so, so much for being here today. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and flavor idea. It is definitely one of my favorites. And as I mentioned, it is a fan favorite as well. So I hope you give it a try. If you do, make sure to tag me on Instagram at Maddie Brame. I'd love to see your end results. All right, if you are not already subscribed here, make sure to click the button down below. And I'd love to see you here again next time for more fun recipes and background ideas. Until the next time, have a wonderful day. Bye.